What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's time for the next week of the LBA, that's right, the Lithio Battle Association. And this week the Eternity Enders are up against the Los Angeles Nitty Kings, of course coached by Johnny Diesel, whom I have battled several times. He's quite a wonderful battler. Now this matchup was actually pretty difficult to prepare for. Um, I have my co-coach Aiden to thank for several of the sets this week. I actually had the battle when I was in New York, so I do hope you guys enjoyed the battles while I was out of town. Now we're back. Um, I also had this battle when I was slightly um, under the influence from alcohol, so that also definitely had an impact on how I was playing. And uh, I also had the battle, I literally was running back from the subway so I could hurry up and battle him, because he was kind enough to stay up for me and battle. Now, what do we have this week? We have a Choice Specs Porygon Z with Hyper Beam. I so hope I get to use that. I'm switching the specs over from Garbodor. Uh, Garbodor actually is a more offensive set uh, with a lot of attack for Gunk Shot to hit the Togekiss and then Drain Punch just to try to grab some HP back and then Spikes in the last slot in an effort to uh, really apply some pressure. Now we also have Pontiard with Substitute alongside Eviolite and Swords Dance knockoff. I mean Sucker Punch and Iron Head. I put enough HP uh, on there in order to survive a uh, Venusaur with Hidden Power Fire, which is perfect. With an opportunity to set up a Swords Dance or a sub, I can do some damage. Um, Cobalion is actually carrying a Chopal Berry. I was worried about him having Weavile and Low Kick, and he actually didn't bring Weavile, so that worked out. Should have brought the Shuka Berry, but that's okay. Um, Archaeops is a Power Herb Sky Attack set that I was really excited about. And then Mammal Swine is more of a standard Life Orb set, running a lot of speed, just to be able to handle Garchomp. Um, it also allows me to hit Togekiss. I can hit the uh, Metagross with Earthquake unless he's running Bullet Punch. You know, I get a lot more options that way. And of course, this wonderful crisp quality is brought to you by Skyrander, so I'll leave his link in the description too. Now, my opponent starts off with Melodic, and I went, just let's go. Let's go immediately Hyper Beam. There's nothing that can come in on it. Melodic's gonna be annoying. And so I wipe Melodic out turn one. That, w that actually got me pretty pumped. I don't think there's any way you could have seen that coming. And Thunderbolt would not have KO'd it. So uh, I have to recharge, so that allows Garchomp to come in here for free, get up a Swords Dance and a Substitute. Um, but Cobalion outspeeds it since it's not the Scar set, so even though he's able to get off a uh, Substitute in the Swords Dance, I will be able to bring his Substitute with a close combat. And while Cobalion will be revenge killed, and that means I won't get my rocks for this battle, I don't have to worry about a Garchomp behind a Substitute with plus two attack. Uh, now it would have been really, really nice to have had the Shuka Berry, then maybe I might have lived. I doubt it after the plus two. Uh, I also considered Air Balloon on Cobalion. But now I can bring in Mammal Swine and threaten the Garchomp out. I didn't want to play any games with it though in case he did want to stay in with the possible Yachi Berry or anything like that. So I wasn't in a position to really predict Metagross switching in. Uh, I decided to go straight for the Ice Shard and I don't, I do about as much damage to Metagross as I take from my Life Orb. So. Um, I switch up to Ponyard here hoping for the Zen Headbutt or the Seal type move. I do switch in on the Bullet Punch, and I get to see that he's Life Orb, which is fantastic. Seeing that means unlikely that he'll have some other coverage moves because maybe he's trying to set up with a Rock Polish or something like that. And that means I get to set up a substitute of my own. Um, kind of following uh, JJ's lead here as far as uh, setting up a substitute and then trying to sword stance. Now as Venusaur comes in, I know I really won't be able to damage it unless I go for sword stance. I can just go straight for the attack, but it really won't do that much, and if he has synthesis, it's not worth my time. So I went ahead and went for the sword stance before going for Iron Head, and that actually does a good amount of damage. And because I invested 184 speed EVs, I was able to outspeed Venusaur. Now I did flinch it on the first turn, but that didn't end up mattering because the sec I either got a high damage roll or a low damage roll on the second one because I don't end up KOing it. I am just going to bring in Archaeops to scare Venusaur out and I was really tempted to go for Stone Edge here but I thought Metagross would come in so I went for Earthquake. Uh, Stone Edge is almost able to take out Togekiss if I had a Life Orb that would have done it but unfortunately we are going to get paralyzed here and Riptorio was bred just for this battle with Sky Attack and everything and I just I'm just sitting on that power orb. I clicked Sky Attack right here because I knew he was just going to roost up in my face, but I get paralyzed, so a little bit of revenge hacks there from um, Venusaur getting flinched. Uh, 
Now, I'm not going to stay in here because if he has Aura Sphere, that'll actually do a decent chunk. Um, also, if he has Dazzling Gleam, that'll do a decent chunk. So I don't want to take those attacks. If I don't have to, I go out into Garbodor to threaten out Togekiss. I figured I could set up some spikes as well, which unless he has Defog on Togekiss, that's his only way of really getting rid of the entry hazards. Um, so I just go straight for spikes, which works out very nicely. Now right here, I ended up staying in because I thought for sure he'd predict my switch to Ponyard, but he does have the coverage move of Earthquake, which will hit Ponyard or Garbodor. I thought he would go for um, maybe a fighting type move to hit Ponyard. But uh, of course, Ponyard doesn't exist, so I don't know why I'm saying that. That was my thinking at the time. But since he did go straight for Earthquake, I know he fears me coming in with Porygon and going for a Dark Pulse. So going into Porygon and going for a Tri-Attack here with Specs means that nothing on his team can switch in and I get a delicious KO on the Electros as it tries to switch in there. Even with an Assault Vest, there was a chance of me to KOing it with Specs and Adaptability. So Modest Max Special Attack Porygon Z does not mess around. And right here, I figured that his only offensive move might have been Air Slash, just by the way he's been playing Togekiss. Uh, Cause Air Slash, Roost, Thunder Wave, that last slot sometimes has Heal Bell, sometimes has Defog, uh, or maybe a coverage move like Flamethrower or something like that. But I figured I could come into Riptoria here, take a couple attacks. I figured he might flinch me or I might get paralyzed once or twice. I could hit him with the Stone Edge and then go for the Power of Sky attack, but he flinches and paralyzes me to death. A Pokemon that resists the move that he's using. Um, that was just unfortunate there. If I had gotten any prior damage, then that means this Icicle Crash would have been able to KO the Togekiss. But Togekiss is so bulky that it holds on, but he misses an Air Slash. So a little bit more uh, revenge hacks in that way. If I had gotten any damage on him at all with my um, uh, Archaeops, then of course he would have been KO'd by the Icicle Crash or been forced to switch out to Metagross, the Metagross would have taken additional damage too. But in this situation, I have almost a full health Mamoswine, and that means I can actually take a hit from Metagross with a Life War Bullet Punch, which I'm assuming is adamant max attack. I have a little bit of HP on there, I didn't have quite max speed, but not really enough HP to matter. So if he had hit the Air Slash, Mamoswine would have died to the Bullet Punch. But it's, it's kind of a 50-50 there because if I hadn't hit him at all with my Archaeops, then I would have still had a full health Mammoth Swine either way. But I do live that uh, Life Orb hit with 5 HP, which means I can finish off the Togekiss as well. And that means his last Pokemon is Garchomp. And with Porygon Z at full HP, I only had enough speed to outspeed um, like a Garchomp that didn't invest in any speed, and then the rest was punched, pumped into HP. Uh, so that means I'm actually able to take this Earthquake pretty comfortably. And I'm able to go for a Choice Specs Try Attack, and that's going to cleanly take out Garchomp, meaning we're able to secure another 1-0 victory. Um, quite the haxy battle in that one, but nevertheless, it was still a fun battle, and I also proved to myself that I can battle when um, if I've been drinking. So that was a little fun experiment for me. But very, very proud of how Porygon Z performed in that battle. It was definitely the linchpin. Um, I do think things would have gone differently if... Um, for example, I hadn't flinched Venusaur, then Venusaur wouldn't have been in a range to die to spikes, for example. Uh, furthermore, if um, he hadn't whittled my Archaeops down to death with the para flinching combo there, then Archaeops would have hit Togekiss at some point, forcing it to roost. Then he wouldn't have had that opportunity to keep on doing that, and then it would have only been a 25% chance of paralysis. Uh, so some different things might have turned out different ways, but that's how we have it happen this time. And uh, that 1-0 victory is mine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this battle video and uh, look forward to the next week in the LBA. Of course, we have some other matches coming up for the PPL, some other things going on. I hope you're enjoying the battles. I'm definitely enjoying prepping for them. So have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.